After the operational period briefing, the incident action plan is executed by the operations section and supported by the rest of the command and general staff. In the course of executing the incident action plan, the incident management team must assess their progress, and if necessary, the incident commander or the unified commanders may adjust the objectives to reflect current conditions. If that's the case, they may choose to convene another strategy meeting. As the planning P graphic shows, this planning process continues throughout the incident until it is closed out. It's important to recognize that the, the planning P progresses while the incident is occurring. Uh, the planning P doesn't occur in a vacuum. We are required to manage the incident while we're conducting the planning process. The incident doesn't stop for the planning process and the process doesn't stop for the incident. So it's important that we are able to balance that as we move along in the planning process. I see the ICS planning process as the core of managing an incident. It's the glue that holds everything together. If an incident management team can master the ICS planning process and continue to fall back to that process, eventually they will get control of the incident. The chaos will continue, the incident will, will grow, uh, things will happen that, that want to distract you away from that planning process, but incident management teams must adhere to the schedule, they must get the plan out, and if they can master that process, they will be successful.